and welcome back to Dream Girl. I'm Sheen, your host, and today we're joined by the wonderful co-founder of Fable in Maine, and you might know him as the sensation on internet for the... What song was it? Uh, Tyler, Water by Tyler. Water, oh, yeah, God. that one. Hey, Akash, hello Hi. and welcome. Uh, nice to... Thanks for having me and thanks for embarrassing me. No, tell us, how was that experience? <laughs> that twerking on the... Twerking um, on the internet. On my balcony during mm. the Dubai floods, yeah. That just shows, like, be careful what you put out there because <laughs> you never know how viral that can be. I think it got, like, in total, like, 100 million views in all the channels. Wow, people so, really um, like you twerking on that balcony. I, th I think it's maybe I need to do more twerking in my I life. Think you I think should. It's, a, it's a calling. To be honest, yeah. I think your dad was the main character. I think it was that. my dad, though. That's true. I think I pretend I'm taking all the credit, but it's actually all because of my dad and, and his bucket. I, I think I remember the first time I watched it. Yeah. And I was like, what is he doing? I, uh, my dad or me or both. <laughs> both. Mm. Mm, mm, yeah. yeah, that Let's one. Move on. <laughs> but no, that's so good. And then since then, you've kind of like been discovered by the Dubai world, yeah. right? I feel like that kind of opened up this like new content flood of like, just like raw, real life daily joys mm. um, that often is now incorporating my family, dad, Nikki, my work, um, not taking it seriously. I think like the funny thing is it's content and I'm saying content as if it's like, a, you know, part of my life, but it, but it is like we all live in this world where we think about what we're posting content. on social media. Yeah. And um, I used to like always post a lot of stuff, vlogs, travel content, this and that. And nothing worked um, in terms of like reach or mm -hmm. I never had a viral, viral, big viral moment. And then when you don't think about it and you just do something raw, it's often where it works. So I think that's like my new rule book now. And I bring it to the brand as well with Fable and Main. Just like, just be raw, be in the moment. Enough of the days of planning your schedule a week or months in advance. Just be in the presence. Yeah. I love that. But what went through your head when you thought, let me do this video? So... It's actually, this is where trends are quite important. I was like looking at like, that song was kind of resurfacing a bit on TikTok. And then when it was flooding, like I, I just saw the bucket and I saw like the, the water and I was like, you know what? I feel like, and I even just put the phone on the side. I was alone outside and I just like, let's just do this. I think my dad was, my mom was inside watching like, what the hell is this guy doing? And I was like, I have an idea. <laughs> and then I actually did generally have a Zoom call and I actually was generally just filming myself late to a Zoom call. And then it was like 1 a.m. and I was like, let me post this. And this just shows you don't know about content because like you don't know about the platforms and what they're doing because content can perform in any random ways. I um, posted it on TikTok at a private account. I went public, posted it, and I then three hours later deleted it and it had like one be like, 800 views mm -hmm. um, and I was like oh like normally my views would get like 47 or 100 or something so I was like this maybe is going somewhere after three hours so mm. deleted it went private and then I messaged my employee who's like four hours in London behind and I was like by the way I did post this do you think this is good or not she's like no it's funny so I was like okay fine maybe it's not as embarrassing so I went back on TikTok went back to public went to the deleted videos and re it back two hours later. So then it said five hours ago, mm -hmm. 800 views. And I was like, I've killed it. You know, that content's not yeah. going to work. And then I posted it on Instagram and I went to sleep and I woke up and it had like, I think in the morning it had like 70,000 views on TikTok mm. and on Instagram it started picking up. Uh, and I was like, it just shows like, um, if a content is connecting in the moment and like trendy, there's no rule book. Yeah, I think that's why all you see all these like podcasts with like the owners of like Instagram, TikTok. They don't even understand the platforms themselves. So my number one thing is don't blame like the algorithm and stuff. Like just keep on posting and just keep on seeing what performs. Yeah, yeah. and I love how you said that. You know, just making it raw and yeah. in the moment. That's it. Makes it happen. That's like the most important thing. So I feel that's like why um, I did it. And it's actually really funny that. That same um, evening, like I had like a talent call with a potential future ambassador and she like saw my video and she was like, oh, you know, I, I have to tell you the story of Cash. Like I went on TikTok this morning. I saw this really funny guy and I thought, who is this comedian? I went on the account and I was like, this is the founder of the brand I'm going to speak to. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's so embarrassing. But actually they were like, no, we actually found it more endearing. And even now to this day, loads of people come to me and said that I've purchased your product because I found it just, it was just fun to see you like just not take yourself seriously mm. so I was like all right cool like I feel sometimes you know from a business side as well like founders I encourage you like don't have to make your whole grid about putting your product there and I see this way too much like we think we have to be and show we're an entrepreneur and say we're working hard and 
put ourselves working and have the product in front of us. Mm -hmm. But just sometimes you'll maybe connect and even sell more by just being yourself. That's such good advice because I was about to ask you this next, which is, you know how now we've glamorized being busy, the whole yeah. hustle culture. Yeah. And as a founder, this is what you should be doing because the investors are watching you, mm -hmm. your customers are watching you, but you went the complete opposite way and it clearly worked yeah. really well for you. And I think relating to your customers is another level. Yeah. But um, like, how do you think that really translates? Obviously, you've mentioned that you shouldn't take yourself too seriously. Yeah, I, I mean, I, OK, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, we all know we have the sideliners. I and mean, when I mean the sideliners, the people that are watching, kind of judging, will always have an opinion. But guess what? They're always going to have an opinion, even if you do great or embarrassing or silly things. Mm. And you can't serve the content you're putting out there just for them. I learned this during my time when I worked in corporate. So when I was at Dior and these big companies, I often would go to like, say trips with the company, like, you know, work trips. And on a weekend I would go and maybe see a bit more of China or mm. the US or wherever. And I would post that, but not me working on a laptop. And then people in the office would come and complain saying he's just enjoying these work trips. He was having fun. And then I was like, the first time I was thinking, do I have to now like post that I'm working to show that I am working? Or do I have to not show the, the my other side the when I'm out of office hours mm. because people might not perceive it as like I'm taking the work seriously and then like other things would happen and I was I was a victim of that like I was sometimes I'll be honest like posting me at the office late on purpose just to be like I want that person to see it I want my boss to see it um and I think like I've had to realize like who cares as long as you know yourself um even posting that video like I have like high people up at the retailers we are in and like our we don't have investors at Fiblamine but we have like other big stakeholders that have to like make sure I, I impress and they sometimes might be thinking oh sales are down it's because the cash is like just gallivanting having fun posting fun videos he's not taking himself seriously I have to remind myself like it's nothing to do with that they will perceive whatever they can even come to me and comment or whatever I'll I know my capabilities I can mm -hmm work 10 hours a day and still have time to post some funny videos with my mom and dad you know and yeah. that's something I realized I tell everyone to do don't post for the sake of someone else's eyes um post for how you feel and mm -hmm. what makes you feel good about you know what you're doing and what you're putting out there yeah I like what you said about um what they are thinking is not your problem until they bring it to you exactly right yeah and I think that's a, a thing that a lot of founders actually struggle with because mm. we are constantly worried and it's not even founders i think it's generally people in life mm. we are constantly worried oh what is this person thinking about me what do they think well, especially like i mean from our culture as well we were born and raised <laughs> yeah, in a culture <laughs> where like, even my parents have to remind them every day i'm like when they say something to me like this person's thinking this about you i'm like again and? listen to these words like <laughs> you're saying to me we're having a conversation us two and you're mentioning a third party that's got nothing to do with this conversation and guess what I don't care what they think because they don't even care that much their words they'll say it but they don't actually care mm -mm. what's my life they care about their life too so ultimately it's not that deep yeah and I just think we have to remember like and it goes back to the point of like if you think you're impressing someone, you know, they might not actually care that much. And if you think you're upsetting someone, they actually might not care that much. So just don't worry. Don't take it too seriously. Um, but I definitely would encourage everyone, like, try to, like, avoid um, that kind of propagation of uh, kind of, I guess, like a an like insincere version of yourself. Because mm. I see a lot, uh, this is a real big entrepreneurial thing that like we have to say, like, the entrepreneurial nine to five and me working. And I'll sometimes find myself like about to shoot content I'll have my laptop out and I'm like what am I doing like why am I trying to show that I'm working uh, and I see this a lot with a lot of my founder friends sometimes I'm sure that if I get a bit fatigued and a bit like oh, another one trying to pretend that they're working so hard yeah and you are working hard but they're trying to like force that in mm. a video imagine what the consumer is thinking like do they actually care they're sick of you <laughs> probably not um so it's actually not a smart like mm. business move as well on social media to always show that you're a workaholic um, you know what I mean? Absolutely. And I've done it. So I'm one saying oh, that to myself. Oh, we've all done it. Yeah. So I look at my archive and I'm looking at all my content. I've I've been doing that mm. for a long time. So I've just realized that now. And I think this that viral twerking video made me realize people just want real stuff, mm. not this not this um, ideal version. And also, when you're showing something so hyper, like the best version of ourselves, mm -hmm. you're in you're actually like in an alternate world, like kind of like making someone feel inferior. Because you're kind of like kind of showing this unrealistic side. Because let's be honest, like we don't work like that every mm. day. Mm -mm. So. We really don't. No. <laughs>
So, but now let's talk about it. So mm. you were in the corporate world, yes, and then you started Fable and Mean with Nikki, who's your yeah, sister, my sister, yeah, uh, who was actually on the second season of the podcast I know, when I was yeah. still in the UK. Um, so tell us, where did the story of Fable and Mean come from? Where mm. did the idea come from? And also, you know, I use Fable and Mean all the time. I mean, look, look at, at my hair. beautiful hair. Guys. So honored. It's all Fable and Mean. Yeah. But yeah, please tell us. Yeah. So um, so just to track a bit. Um, a little bit like I worked in corporate world. So I was in um, es Estee Lauder, Dior and some of these corporate uh, giants. And I didn't, I mean, best school, no regrets, but I didn't feel truly like I was proud to be in a brand that was really giving back to the planet or like an, because I didn't feel that there was a real CSR or a cultural reference or, you know, the things that mattered to me. It was just a beautiful product, beautiful brand story, but I felt like there was a gap missing for that. And especially our own culture. Um, so that was definitely like, you know, I, I'm going to jigsaw this for you. There was like one side of me that was like gap in the market for mm -hmm. an South Asian Ayurvedic brand that put like people like us on the face. Number two, um, unfortunately that year, like uh, when the idea was kind of conceived of me and my sister, both my grandmas passed away. And, you know, like, uh, I mean, it, ha it happens, but it is hard. But, you know, the, all, all my grandparents have passed in their 70s. So they're quite young, you know. So I think for me... Um, the, the last two, my grandmas, they were like very, very close to me, especially my nanny, my mom's side. Um, I shouldn't say that. My, my dad said those are very close, but my nanny, like- It's a little bit closer. <laughs> no, I shouldn't even say that. That's, <laughs> cut. No, I'm kidding. Um, but, but both, no, both are, both are really important. But my nanny, I was, had a really special bond growing up because she only came from India in the summer. So I only had a couple of months a year with mm -hmm. her. And every time she used to bring these like incredible, like, oils and ayurvedic like we'd call them potions because in, in london we didn't get many of these ingredients so she brought her own she brought her own or like some indian brands mm -hmm. uh like the typical like the vatica de bull yeah, and, stuff. Yeah, yeah. and the problem with those were they were amazing but they kind of were very heavy they stank a bit so the only time i would get bullied in school uh, was because oh. of like either like curry hair or some you know kids are kids stupid or like something about racism of like, you know, people would come to me and be like, hello, where does your dad work in the corner shop? And I'm like, this is pathetic. And like, I was, I was kind of annoyed that like our culture and us just being who we were, were the things that were being ridiculed. But I felt like growing up, like maybe it's also like whether we can change people's minds and we need to, we also need to have rituals that are empowering to like also be like maybe celebrated. Because even if I wasn't ridiculed, I did find the oil really heavy, really stinky, not very like. Yeah, we don't it like it as we kids. We don't like it, no. and I don't like it when I'm thirty. Same. So <laughs> there was also a gap for bringing that kind of to a modern kind of formula for all hair types, because Ayurveda does not discriminate. So all our products should be for all hair types, not just for South Asian hair. Um, but when um like when my nanny passed away, the biggest memory was when my nanny used to massage her hair and read her stories. So that's why the name Fable and Main Story and Hair. And um, we had this concept so clear, Story and Hair, Fable and Main. We had the oil as like the hero. And we just linked in message Sephora, like a junior, like a, a buyer in San Francisco. We just found like randomly LinkedIn. And we just had the PDF, no samples, nothing. And lo and behold, she replied and she was like, we love this concept. We don't have an Ayurvedic or an Indian brand like this. When can you come visit us? And I was still at Dior. So I left, I uh, took a sick day, went to San Francisco, and then we were, had like a really productive meeting with them. And then they were like, when can you come back with more samples? We need to also think about like a ritual, a shampoo, conditioner, mask. So four were incredible partners. Like they call them in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. So in the kitchen is when you work with them, like kind of creating magic, You're cooking, it, yeah. cooking it before you launch. And I think there was like a couple of months in, I was like, wait, are we launching? And they're like, yeah, of course we're launching together. And I was like, oh damn. Like, so we became, um, uh, we launched in Sephora US uh, day one in all stores and online um, where the next big thing was for hair. And we became the first Ayurvedic brand at Sephora and the first sibling founded brand. I guess not many people want to work with their sisters or siblings. <laughs> I get it. I really do. I'm kidding. Um, but I will say like it was just such a incredible kind of feeling to like honor our grandparents in that way and see their legacy continue in this brand. Um, so we put my nanny front and, you know, in the whole brand story, you go on our website, you'll see all about the story mm -hmm. of the family. And uh, the last thing was really important for me, going back to the why I didn't feel, you know, tick, yes, now I've got the culture, but still the CSR and the giving back was not there. So me and my sister's dream from day one was to have a wildlife fund. It wasn't really to create a beauty brand, to be honest. And we thought no better time than to create the wildlife fund at the same time as this beauty brand and connect the dots. But 
the biggest problem with conservation and like a lot of kind of just generally charities in general, it's often relying on fundraising and like, you know, galas and just like donations, which can often stall actual work being, uh, you know, deployed in real time mm -hmm. when it matters. And I just felt there was a big gap between entrepreneurship and, and really impact. And I thought, well, this beauty brand will be the vehicle for funds one day when we exit and when we grow yeah. this business. And the fund can be impacted by real time by the education element. So let's have the tiger as a logo. Let's talk about what we're doing. But I don't want to ask people for their money. We will, when we sell the business or when we, you know, start making profits out, we will put money in real time. And then I want to make this the largest wildlife fund in the world. So my goal is to be a billion dollar wildlife fund. If that means I've got to create 50, 100 businesses and keep mm -hmm. on exiting them to my fund, I'll do that. And that's why I want to make sure that's my driving purpose, which is why I work till like 2, 3 a.m. every night. It's not because I want to make more money to buy a Lamborghini <laughs> in a house. I'm not going to make much money from this brand. It's going to be given back to the planet in real time. And that's like why I think I'm, I'm the, the beneficiary of joy. Like it's a selfish act of mm. kind of um, making myself be ha more happier. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. But you know the saying, right? What is it? Um, no act of kindness is selfless. Yeah. But if kindness means the world is a little bit more selfish, that's okay. That's okay. And yeah. I think we need to rewrite what selfish is because selfish is not a bad thing. No. You know, uh, it's just uh, it's how you perceive it and how you're using that act of selflessness into kind of existence. Yeah. So I think that's something that I encourage like all people thinking about creating a business is like don't make CSR an impact and afterthought. Mm -hmm. Make it as the core part of why you exist, mm -hmm. even as part of your exit plan, because um, the planet needs it now. And the lo longer we wait, honestly, we won't have a planet really left by the end of all of it. So I just encourage more impact entrepreneurs to to rise and, you know, let's all work together. Um, and that's something I think is very important. Like right now, while I'm building my my own conservation fund, I'm working with like Jane Goodall, Elephant Family and all these different organizations with different animals at the forefront. Ours isn't really focusing on big cats today. Mm -hmm. And I want to make this coalition of wildlife funds that we all come together. Because honestly, if you think about it right now, I'll put it out there. Um, when you think of conservationists, there's not many that you can name that are either a people of color, like mm -hmm. myself, young, like myself, or even alive. A lot of the conservationists are sadly passed away or mm -hmm. were killed in doing conservation work. You know, we're talking like Diane Fossey, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And um, when you think about wildlife funds, we can all name WWF, but we all have like a sense of like, you know, maybe a, what are they really doing? And there's not many more, but we all love animals. So I feel like there's a space and a gap again, like I saw in Ayurveda and hair care mm -hmm. for the next big wildlife kind of coalition, I would say. Mm -hmm. My fund will be part of it, but I want to build them all together. Yeah. Okay. Well, Akash, when I listen to you and the reason why you started the business, it feels really wholesome and yeah. like it ties in such beautiful parts of, your identity, right? You care about animals, you, your culture, how you grew up, and at the same time, also your passion. Yeah. How does it make you feel now when you see people in name? Oh, it makes me so proud. Like, I actually, now, like, looking at the brand today, like, the, the, it, it gets stressful as you build it. Like, don't get me wrong. And, like, I look at it now and I'll, I will see the cracks. I will see, like, oh, like, five years in, we haven't done this or we're not, the competitors are here. And, like, there's all this kind of, like, you know, like a, like a child, when it grows older, it gets more complicated. You, you don't, you still, New problems. <laughs> you love your baby so much, yeah. but when it's a teen, you start not liking certain things compared to when it's a baby, you just have so much love and mm. abundance. Uh, it's normal, it's human, right? <laughs> so I definitely have so much joy for the brand and so much love, but I think it's more about not necessarily looking at it from like the, what is Fable and Main, but more what has Fable and Main done and who it's impacted and who's on the journey. Mm. That makes me really emotional. Like my team, um, the people that come to me and say, I've heard about your brand or I love your oil. And it's like the people affected in a good way about the brand. That is what drives me um, and the animals too. Um, so I feel basically to answer your question, immense pride and joy. Um, but I will be honest, bit of fear as well because it's a self-funded brand it's five years old um the beauty industry is a bit more based on profit and competitiveness and you know we've had like uh like other similar brands or other brands like try like you know 
you hear these stories of like the competitive drama and, yep. and then they start like uh, blacklisting you and doing this and that. Mm. And I'm like, oh, this industry is not as nice as I thought. Mm -hmm. This made me want to quit the beauty industry a few times. I've heard, I'm not going to ever mention names of conglomerates and stuff, but like yeah. they think you're way bigger than you are and they want to like, I've, and I've seen this when I worked in luxury brands mm. and stuff. Like the way we would talk about other brands was so disgusting. Yeah. I'm now experiencing it in my brand and I feel it with brands that are in a similar space, founders. Um, so I have to remember like, I'm here for a greater purpose. I'm not here creating a beauty brand. I'm here creating an impact on this planet. Yeah, That's what keeps me out of bed. Mm -hmm. If it was just creating a beauty brand, I feel like I'm not meant to be that kind of entrepreneur. Mm. I'm not this like cutthroat, like yeah. I don't even, I mentioned like a few minutes ago, the word competitor. I don't even like the word competitor. Like I just think we're all collaborators. Mm but businesses will change you, profit, p ls will change you. And I think I have to remember, try as much as possible to not become that CEO that sometimes people think you need to be to be at the top. Um, I wanna figure out a way to not change too much. Oh, absolutely. But I it's mean, hard. Yeah. the beauty industry, it's known to be cutthroat, it right? Is, so yeah. you, you kind of like pick one of the hardest ones. It is, and you know, I'll be honest, like I spent a little, little bit more time in the conservation space the last couple of months. And then someone said this to me, you know, Akash, like, you think you're escaping the beauty industry and you're going to get it better everywhere else, but every industry mm -hmm. has it. And then I actually recently I've been in the conservation space a bit and I was like, oop, I feel it now too. I feel, and it's really where people are generally not to People not are everywhere, down, right? Yeah. But people can be um, not very nice. Yeah. Um, but I like being in control of what I'm doing because I can mm. then choose who mm -hmm. I have around me and who I yeah. don't. And I can be resilient to the the noise and the kind of the, the negativity when mm -hmm. it, when I can be. I just have to, I have to use it as like armor building, like mm. I'm meant to be dealing with this. Yeah. But I will say I will not change who I am and for the people and what they think. That's um, and that's the thing. Like I, I want to propagate that sense of like stay true to yourself and don't let businesses change you because trust me, like everyone will come with an opinion even your employees your stakeholders your investors they will tell you what they think you should do mm. and guess what it might be right it might be wrong there's no such thing as right and wrong when it comes to this there's just a decision you got to make you got to have the pros and cons associated with it and you got to make sure no matter what you're gonna have to deal with all of that but you feel proud of who you are by the end of it so that's the number one thing that keeps me a bit calmer about everything is i will always have a flurry of decisions to make but I never worry if it's right and wrong. I just worry how, you know, do I feel after the decision's made? Mm. And I think that's actually been my lifeline in building this business because I've often just ignored a lot of people's opinions and done what I think is right. And I never regretted it because I had that mindset. But that requires a strength of character, right? I yeah. feel like a lot of people don't have it. You know, it comes from spirituality a lot, mm. I think. I think it does come from... Um, Growing up, I was really surrounded by, like my car journeys was like Osho, not radio. And as much as at that time, I was like, mom, dad, change the radio. I want to listen to like, <laughs> whatever. The pop. I want to, yeah, I want to listen to the, the hot new pop music. And I was like, listen to Osho lecturers. Um, but having these great spiritual leaders just surrounded by their words of wisdom, um, having that, you know, growing up around it with Deepak Chopra and reading books in this kind of like similar vein of mm -hmm. like mindfulness, consciousness, I think it does make you subconsciously like a great entrepreneur. I would say mindful entrepreneur. Um, if you can find a way to link that with business because, um, and the best thing is, is there's no better time than now to start that journey. So you could have started it when you're four, you could have started it when you're 40. The point is, is it will, when it, once one message resonates with you, it will change you. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like going to therapy. Yeah. There's no, you know, I would, I don't think one person has said to you like, or said to someone like, Hey, um, I went to therapy too late. It's like, no, once you started it, you realize the value. Mm. But I feel like I also think many people should look at spirituality and it's not religion. I'm talking about like, this is just about figuring out ways your mind works and practices, whether it's breath work, meditation, things like that can really help you have that kind of mindset that we were talking about before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's, I owe it to that. Uh, time and, you know, having great leaders and mentors and my father and, and even like having a good team, it's all part of it too. Yeah. But it really does come but from But that's also that. internal work, right? Yes. Yeah. And also therapy, so that probably does help too. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Well, what, what do they say? They say um, the, be the best time to start therapy was 10 years ago, but yeah. the next best time is today. today. Exactly. <laughs> and I think that's exactly it. And, um, and I feel many people uh, who've done therapy know how great it is. And listen, I'm not, I don't do it every week and, and I want to, it's just, I, 
you know, sometimes it, it's getting expensive or I'll be traveling. Or That's it's the only hard. issue with therapy. Yeah, yeah, the best ones cost the most. And you're like, great, I should be a therapist. <laughs> I'll, I'll be loaded. Yeah. Um, but it is something that is, you know, it's amazing. It's yeah, so, so everyone is therapy, let's everyone be is. honest. Yeah. We're all, we all carry something. Especially in this year and this age and social media. Like, Our generation, gosh, oh my goodness. We need it, yeah. But yeah. I have two things I want to talk to you about. The yeah. first one. Um, I remember what four years ago when I spoke to Nikki at the time I was blown away by Fable and Main because it was as you said the first Ayurvedic um, brand that was in Sephora but since then you, you've opened the doors for everyone else but, so a lot of competitors came through as you say all yeah. other brands came collaborators through. yeah but, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know this is this is more for myself you know mm. because in my line of business it's the same you start something and then others start copying your model that's yeah. working right how do you deal with that? Well, number one, I've copied it from somewhere too. Yeah. So let's be honest. Like, I don't believe in copying is a bad thing mm -hmm. as long as it's an honoring or a sense of like um, moving forward to help people. So even if someone copies and doesn't honor me, but help someone, I'm Fine. good. I'm good. Yeah. Um, uh, I feel like uh, I definitely feel there's a difference between having a morality and having like, you know, not. And I think that's something that there are definitely brands and founders that I've seen I've helped a lot, I've done a lot. And then I realize, oh, that's a bit rude. Or they've said mm. this or they've, and and I'm not going to mention any names or no. any brands, but it exists sadly quite too often. Um, and I feel that's something that I know, I'm the least confrontational person. So I'll never oh, even bring too. it up. <laughs> so like, you'll just sit with me for a second. And I'll try to like eat it out. Like I'll like, I'll be like get it out. Um, but it doesn't mean I won't forget. Mm. And it doesn't mean I won't necessarily go out of my way to help that person again, of just course. because I feel like they need to learn like, there is a sense of morality of like, hey, you introduced me to this retailer and we got in. Thank you so much. Um, I've had so many people do that. Where I introduce them to a retailer. They, they get into the retailer. They, don't. they come to the market that I'm in. They launch and they don't invite me, but they invite all my friends. And it's like, hmm. So like those moments, I'm like, uh, I get a little bit like in my head and I'm like, I would never have done that. But then I realize that's because I would never have done that. Mm -hmm. I can't assume someone else wouldn't. I can't assume they've had the same line of thinking in school. So I have a lot of sympathy, a lot of empathy and patience that people will change and i also don't need to expect them to because that's my own expectation mm. so i feel like i would love to see more morality when it comes to those kind of things but you can't avoid it and savoir. but also at the same time like don't expect anything from anyone you'll always be potentially let down mm. you should always give and not expect so even that is why i have to remind myself like hey i chose to give that retailer connection why are we expecting anything back that's what you would have done, but you can't expect them to be you. So I think that's helped me a lot to never really let it affect me. So I'm in such a positive mindset all the time about these things because I'm like, it's all good. It's, you know, I don't mind. I think that helps me a lot. And when I see someone copy something exactly, we've had brands copy our packaging. We've had, I, I, I try to like, I'm like the master of changing my brain wave. And I'm like, I'm like, it it's a is, compliment. I'm like, Yes, that's a great thing. That's amazing. Uh, and also, well, let me go forward. Uh, you know, that's, I have to innovate now. Even mm. It pushes me. So those things never affect me. If anything, they're actually gifts, if you choose to see it that way. You're so much better than me. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, I think, I think also it does come from an immense place of, like, like, privilege of, like, I personally this is not my life mm. like my life i'm good like this business if yeah. it works it doesn't work i'll be a cash and i'll be happy and i have yes. and i have also you know my own like fortunateness of like having the wealth and stuff that i can like yeah. live comfortably so mm -hmm. that's why i do these businesses mm -hmm. for pure impact not for pure profit because i don't get joy putting it in my pocket i mm -hmm. want to put it back in the planet so everyone's different like i understand i've met people that i even tell them hey don't be upset with that person copying they're like you don't understand a cash this is my life this is my one business yeah. i put all my savings into this and this i have to make it work and when someone copies me and and then you know they're taking my market share it is personal and i'm like okay i, I get it then you know so i but i still feel like if you get your source of abundance from not that you will you will help yourself mm. you know like you can always re direct the brain yeah to think about things differently like we can't control the reasons and our own personal stories and our back stories of that mm -hmm. but we can control what we do with that information yeah that's why i encourage everyone is don't focus on why and why it affects you and how it's not okay so when i have friends who complain about someone i'm not going to be that friend that's like yeah i can't believe they did that and egging them up and be like yeah she's bad or he's bad i'm going to be like you're good and what's next you know because it's done mm. let's move on 
and let's make this a positive. Yeah. And whatever you do for someone else, it comes back to you in another way. Exactly. And even yeah. if it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No expectations. No expectations. Okay, fine. I'll try. You know, because exactly <laughs> that, we're expecting something back yeah. in, in the form of we don't even know when. But that's just us protecting ourselves a bit to be like, this is okay. okay. But, but that's slightly not long term because mm. we can't always say to ourselves and after everything, this is meant to be, this is meant to be for a reason. Sometimes like it is, move on. You know, the mm. meant to be is subconsciously connected to, I expect then something will help mm. me later. Yeah. But it's not necessarily. Uh, it actually might be really bad. It might actually close your business down and it might be the worst <laughs> thing ever. But it happened. What are you yeah. going to do about it after? Yeah. And that's why I think it's really important is we mm. actually kind of train the brain to be like, we live on this planet. It's not easy. It's not simple. It's not one that, it's not one note, but we just have to keep on moving and mm -hmm. be happy. Yeah. Yeah. And this reminds me of this analogy of, you know, a bird uh, doesn't land on a branch because it trusts that the branch will not break. It trusts in its ability of its own wings that if the branch breaks, that. it can, it fly, can fly, fly off. Yeah. That's so true. Right? It's actually such a beautiful way. I think this is why I love analogies. Like we do it so often in our life. Like we get out of the, we, we, we actually are so incredible, like as humans, like we, when we think about like leaving a home and let's say I said you're leaving your home and you're thinking about like, you might get hit by a car today. Mm -hmm. You might be like, oh God, I'm fearful. I don't know. I can think about left and right. Like you start reminding yourself. The minute, you, But then how many times have you left your home and never thought about it? And then you go home and you're like, oh, like it was a normal day. Mm -hmm. You don't live in that fear. So don't put these thoughts and doubts in your head because your brain, your body will automatically just save itself and figure it out. Mm -hmm. We're much more as transient, like as, you know, beings, we're so much more... Um, incredible than we think yeah <laughs> you know so our brain is sometimes the biggest downfall our mind because we're the ones playing tricks on ourselves which is why i keep on going back in this like conversation about i think this is the whole premise of the conversation is like yeah. the brain it's hack. all in your head yeah like, it's all in our head so everything we do we can change it by just a thought yeah and you know whatever we the thoughts we feed the brain and so it is right mm. so you think Oh, my day's gonna go bad. I'm in a bad mood. It will go bad. It will go bad. Yeah, there's no coming bad back. Hair day. <laughs> yeah. It's all connected to it's... how you woke up and how you feel, not yeah. actually the hair itself. Hundred percent. So I feel that's like yeah, really important to remember. No. But um, but it also just going back a little bit on the topic of like people around you. Tell me. There is a reality though. Like you could have this abundant mindset, and then you'll be sometimes the unavoidable people around you, right? I mean, I can even go as close to my sister, my parents. Mm. Like, we have very different mindsets on certain yeah. things. Sometimes yeah. I'll be like, how are you, my family? And you have that mindset. It doesn't mean I don't love them. Mm. It doesn't mean I'm not going to like, I'm not going to try to change them. Yeah. But there is an art of also figuring out like that uncomfortableness about that, how people can sometimes make you feel. We have this sense of like, let's avoid it. Let's choose to not be around it. But actually, again, my recommendation always is sometimes thrive in that uncomfortableness and realize there is always work to be done on ourselves. There's always growth to be done to understand that person's mindset. I'm seeing this with the elections. I'm seeing this with like so many conversations where you sometimes like have these polarized thoughts and polarized people, but realize we are connected humans. We just have to sometimes not debate, not fight, but realize like one of us has to just listen more mm -hmm. and not necessarily propagate our own beliefs and thoughts. And when one of you does that with a, so much abundance of just, I'm listening and I'm actually not listening and pretending I'm like understanding, but I'm genuinely understanding. You'll see how much more beautiful relationships can grow. So I feel like I see so much content online about like, cut this person out, negativity out. Cancel culture. Cancel culture and yeah. like this person. And even like with work environments and I don't want to talk to this person. And I have to do this every day with my teammates. They call me and they're like, I don't like this. I'm like, listen, like, and I actually sometimes I'm like, they're your friends. They, you guys are so alike. Like, mm. I'm reminding them, like, why are you going to your first thought and letting your brain take you to this tangent when actually you haven't listened to that person? You haven't tried to connect. You haven't understood that maybe you can grow in that conversation. So I really want people to remember that, um, you know, uh, yeah, it's important. No, that's really good advice. And, you know, the the whole thing is, it's psychologically proven that most of us listen to argue 
Mm. We don't listen to open our minds, as you said. Yeah. So it's great advice to actually pay attention. Yeah. See, go open thinking maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Let I'm wrong. me cha- change my mind. And it often comes from when you're a child because your parents will often say, this is what you do and this is what you don't do, right? Yeah. So you're, up, you're often told like, but mom, but no, no, don't argue. And you're like, okay. So you're often told from a young child, mm. there is a way, there is a belief or, you know, a parent would say, that person bullied you in school, don't talk to them. Mm-hmm. Ignore, I'm going to speak to the parent. You're kind of told it's so easy to not deal with it, protect yourself, move away. But actually... You haven't given that opportunity. There was a reason, maybe again, go back to this reason why that came into your existence. Mm. If you chose to make that your kind of benefit, how beautiful would life be Mm -hmm. that you see the beauty in everything, you know? Yeah, no, no, definitely great advice. But I want to go back, as you mentioned, the Mm. whole school thing. Mm. Isn't it funny how in the past we used to be bullied for everything to do with our culture? Yeah. And now? It's trendy. It's a, you have, uh, what is it? The turmeric latte. Turmeric latte. <laughs> You've got like head massages. The head massage. Lemon. You've got yeah. all this stuff. So no, it's cool. It, but it's good. And also even, um, what was it? The Ashoka challenge. Yeah. Oh, right. With all over TikTok and like people, and just generally Bollywood. And like, I feel like, I feel like it's an odd thing to say, but it often started within our own culture. Mm. I actually found the most racism was within the South Asian community. Not only to external beings, but also internally Mm -hmm. to our own culture. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's where I found more of my struggles growing up, was the dinner tables with aunties and stuff and hearing what they were saying. And I was like, what is happening? Why are we saying this? Or like, if this person was with a non-Indian, like they must be mucked up. And I heard all this stuff and I'm like, what? So like six, five, seven years old, I was always like, little bit like mm-hmm. that non-confrontational but trying to be like i don't agree <laughs> it was really hard like i didn't know if i should fight my battle mm. explain educate them walk away i often just sat there and listened and uh and just like figured out and i didn't think you know i didn't have maybe the the articulateness of today to like mm. kind of fight my rationale to make them understand that like guys don't say that like what are you, why are you saying that? Mm. Um, and it was just because it was projection after projection after projection from generations yeah. that I've just made them believe that. So I kind of, it's so hard to undo. Mm. It's easier with the new generation, but with the old generation, it's harder. Um, and then you go to the external beings and then they think about, okay, yeah, there are certain cultures that are always marginalized and it's based on stereotypical behavior. So yeah, growing up, I was only bullied if, like I remember the, the, the one time I actually went, I cried in school, I was in like the hockey pitch and these two um, kids, they were, they were white, they came up to me and they were like, and they were in my year. And the weird thing is, is they're like, I've been in that school for like eight years. And like, I was like, I've known them. So I don't understand, like, they were not, they weren't friends, but they weren't like, no, not they're friends. They're not strangers. I was yeah. like talking to them and, and I was talking like this my whole life. I didn't have an Indian accent or anything, but they would come to me and they would be like, um, hello, can you understand me? Hello. And then they would run away and laugh. And I was, and go back to their friends. And I was just like, that's so lame. But I also, I cried not because I was ashamed of being Indian or because of my culture. Because at that point, at that age, I was like, I embarrassed for them. Mm. I cried because I was like, this is the world we live in. I was 16 and this is the kind of shit I still have to see. Um, and I think that kind of made me really want to focus on like getting into the rooms where I can inspire people. Um because I feel like when you have a voice, people then obviously sometimes they look at you. But if you have a voice and saying the right thing, you're going to propagate that that sense of like what's right, what's wrong. So that was a turning point. And I never had social media. I never wanted to be like on TV or fa- I was the most like shy kid that would like kind of have a hunchback. And if you see my photos growing up, <laughs> I was like, I if there was a school talent concert, I would like never apply, even though I used to love singing because I would just I would just hate being in front of people. I can't believe that was you. By I know. The way. <laughs> I, I I actually had speech therapy because I couldn't speak growing up. I was so shy. That was the turning point in my life. I never told this to anyone, but that was the turning point in my life. Where I said I actually want to have a voice because there isn't many South Asian voices out there that can encourage people that like we are amazing and we can do great things and we can create the biggest you know beauty brands and we can you know create big businesses and we can do it all and we could have a thick Indian accent we don't and we're still great I think that's what changed everything for me um so I again say thank you to those two kids um who 
Now, if I met them, I'll give them so much love and joy because that was them back then. That's not them now. And they're probably embarrassed and I will never hold up to them. But I thank you for making me realize that um, people, you know, people are, can be changed. And I think people can grow and learn. And it comes from not hate. It just comes from propagation of past. And, mm -hmm. and that is the past. We've got to go forward. So it's not that deep. It's just uh, I've got to take it as a positive, you know. Yeah, I love that. And you are doing that now, by the way. Yeah. You are and I showing think, I think that that's to the probably world. why I'm so passionate. As much as my wildlife is my thing, I'm so passionate about putting like like all our faces are South Asia and all like our, I want to rise with all the South Asians in different industries because I'm like, I want younger kids to never have to deal with that shit. You know, they can't. Mm. Um, and it might still exist. Um, and they might not be as spiritually inclined or like maybe, um, yeah, like, emotionally ready to deal with that and it can really hurt people mm -hmm. and i feel like i don't want anyone to deal with that of course and it can hurt the people that are saying it exactly that, that might not be them it might not define them and they need to learn like just keep it to yourself and <laughs> not say it out loud because <laughs> now a cancer culture people can actually cancel yeah you. exactly and it could cause a big problem in your future so let's just not propagate hate but you know even if you think about that situation of like a brown kid getting bullied mm. by a white kid right if you think about it the problem is twofold there's a lack of education and awareness mm. on, on the on the non-brown side, yeah. right? Where they, they're not telling their kids about inclusivity or making them sides. see it, right? You As kids, you need to see it. Mm. But also on our side, kids get really embarrassed really quickly about their culture just yeah. because it's not cool enough. Yeah. And that's because there's no one, they didn't... They, they didn't have people like us in the in the past, right? Mm. Even me growing up, if you were to look up at for a role model, who would you see other than Bollywood actors? But they mm. were not considered cool either. <laughs> and I think we haven't done a good job when growing up to understand there's so much connectivity in everyone's culture. Yeah. Like, I think that's what Fabian Minutes inspired me. When I launched, I actually did launch it thinking, oh, there's that fear of like, would people co co resonate with like the chumpy heroin mm. and like the massaging and the Ayurvedic ingredients. The mo like we when we launched, I think a couple of months in, Sephora so told us we're one of the most like diverse hair brands in terms of customers. We had like a wow. chart, and they don't give this information anymore, probably because of like compliance issues. But back then, they gave us like the split of like customer by ethnicity, mm -hmm. and we had like twenty percent Caucasian, twenty percent Hispanic. It had such a big gap. So you it's had like, everybody. Yeah, like a really amazing distribution index, and I was like, how are we connected to everyone? And I realized, an Hispanic person they might end up having um, a similar oil or a similar ingredient or an Italian person with a nonna or like, so maybe like when I was younger, like if I ever got bullied about something, instead of being like, oh, I know it's so bad, it's smelly, or oh my God, like running away and crying, yeah. I'd be like, ah, I know, but did you ever have also like growing up something like that? And then they might be said, oh yeah, my grandma used to do this. Mm. Dude, you get it, right? And realize we are, we're closer. So remind them, they might have forgotten, but like, yeah. hey, we actually are very similar. So you're bullying me about something that you're also bullying yourself. <laughs> so don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, we all have maybe immigrant parents of some sort. We might have um, a kind of disconnect or connect to our culture in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, some more than others. And I feel like we have to remember, like, we're so much more alike than people think. So did you face any kind of like backlash not backlash but like any challenges when you came forward as the first kind of like you know um a ayurvedic mm. brown people of color kind of brand when you came into the beauty industry so i wouldn't say we've, we were really open with like we were really welcome with open arms mm. like i do feel like it was a even too late like the fact that 2020 was the first ayurvedic brand at sephora like the ayurveda is like four or five thousand years old like we should have had this way before the first indian hair brand at sephora like no uh you think of india you think of hair like yeah. this should have existed so um i do think um and i'm again i'm not i don't want to like say something that's fabricated and lie like it was great like mm. everything was like everyone was so welcoming the love was like just pouring out and everyone was excited. So actually I would say it was just an amazing moment to launch and I felt so loved. Was I experiencing kind of like moments where I had to eye roll a bit or like kind of like mention things a few times? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like even our retailers, you know, they would say, remove Ayurveda, no one's gonna understand that. And I was like, listen, we're an Ayurvedic brand. This is all because you don't know it. Mm -hmm. And even if you're right and not many people know it, this is older than all of us. And mm. I will be the first to lose some sales 
to make people learn and educate. So eventually the next brand will be able to get the sales. So I will be happy to take that hit um, if that's what it takes, but I'm not going to do what's easier. You want me to be pink, fluffy, clouds that will sell to the average consumer? I'm not doing that because everyone's going to do that. There's going to be 100 brands out there and eventually the Fable of Maine will be the one that stands out because we've stayed true to ourselves. Um, and I want to be part of what Ayurveda is for people in 100 years time as part of that conversation um, and beauty and, you know, global beauty, culture beauty. And that's by making sure I don't deviate. So I had to be a bit bullish. I had to be a bit strict. I had to like keep on reminding. Um, had a few like maybe uncomfortable conversations, but it was always the right thing mm. because um, many years later, people, the same retailers were like, oh, like we're seeing Ivad as the next big thing. Can you like put it more? And I'm like, didn't you just tell me to remove it? Thank God I didn't. <laughs> so it goes without saying like, mm. you've got to like expect that there will be a little bit of stickiness because yeah. when you're doing something new and different, people are uncomfortable, mm -hmm. people are apprehensive and people are nervous. Mm -hmm. And they might even be doing all of that from love. They don't actually mean it from a place of hate. They just want you to do well. So all the retailer partners never did it from a place of hate. They were like, we just want to make sure like you're not missing out because if someone's coming to your shelf and it's just not educated and they just see Ayurveda, they might be like, I don't know, so they pick the one above. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know, like that is a true point. But... If I don't put it there, they'll never know. And we need to have differentiation when it comes to retail environments because we need to have a landscape that's showing all types of people. So I don't need to necessarily be that big, big brand for you. So I actually had to like stunt our growth and I had to remind them I'm not here wanting triple digit growth every year because my kind of brand cannot survive with triple digit growth. It's just not the time right now. We're not here yet. Sadly, I have still less time to be become a global sensation and you know when you go to a sephora the average person is looking for yummy scents cool packaging looking at the road rare beauty you have like words like marshmallow mm -hmm. and bubble gum and candy floss they're going to want to buy it you have words like ashwagandha shikakai and bingraj they're What's not, not going to want to <laughs> buy it it will take a bit of time so i think that's something that like i'm okay with that mm. and i remind my partners if I'm, if I'm growing 30% every year, I'm very happy with that. Okay. Uh, it's hard in retail environments because they grow fast and the brands are growing much quicker. And there are now Ayurvedic brands launching that are mm. kind of listening to the retailers and doing what they think. And that's good. But I encourage even those to be like, don't forget our roots. And sometimes don't just listen to everyone around you. Don't listen to the industry. Don't even listen to the consumer. Listen to yourself first. Mm -hmm. Because if you do what's easier today, it'll become harder to change tomorrow. Mm. And you have the power to change the industry. Yeah. Which is great. And that's why I've kept self-funded. Mm. Because investors will want... You have more flexibility I, there. I don't listen to anyone but myself. Yeah. And there's no right and wrong, but I'm happy with that decision yeah. so far, you know? <laughs> no, yeah. Absolutely. But um, you were telling me earlier about how um, shampoo actually came from India, right? Yeah. Tell us about that. So shampoo, um, not many people know this, but I mean, India is a land of like hair. And um, like, I think it's like 96, 97% of the world's wigs was Indian hair. And shampoo came from India, came from the word uh, champo, uh, which means to massage, press and like knead the hair. So um, it was actually like introduced in the 1800s. Um, so Sheikh Din Mohammed came from India to London, bought shampoo, and then we haven't looked back since. Um, so yeah, interesting food for thought. You always probably wondered why are we saying the word shampoo? Like conditioner makes sense because you condition the strands, but why shampoo? It's all about India. See, I didn't know this yeah. until I learned it from you guys. That's yeah. incredible. It's always been there. Mm. Just, we just need more brands to like tell their stories of why they exist and give honor, go back yeah. to the point, honor our roots. Exactly. So Akash, I have a question for you now. Yeah. If you were to remove everything to do with your professional life, okay, who is Akash? Oh, um, he is an animal lover. He is a games enthusiast, um, more board games and like escape rooms. And he is someone that gives a lot of love to anyone around them, um, even whether they, want, whether they want it or not. I'm going to give you love. Um, and that's me. Yeah. I love that you said that because in my head, when I think of you that way, I think that you are kind of a connector. 
Yeah. I feel like you you meet people and you really carry people with you. I love I oh, yeah, I appreciate. I, I think yeah. that's something really important to me because I feel like I could leave this planet tomorrow. I could leave this planet in 50 years, but like if I've left it more beautiful and I think the best way to make it more beautiful is by bringing people together. I think um I've seen this world in the last 30 years becoming more divided and it makes me really sad. So if I can do my little part in that in my little industries and my little places whether it's wildlife coalition beauty and my podcast founded beauty where it was all about more collaboration less competition and i would actually go to like places around the world and like new york la and do this event with founders and i would call it byob like bring your own brand <laughs> and i would like get them all together and they would say it takes a brit to come to new york to connect us and we've been in the same city for so long and i'm like but that's the point like you can continue to do that without me just reminding us that we can be connected we just have to put in the work and not care if that person becomes better friends or that person creates magic or that person does something put your ego aside champion that and be grateful and don't expect a thank you in return mm. then you will continue to connect people that's so important i like that you said that because a lot of times people get a little bit miffed when they mm -hmm. introduce others they and they go it's together very yeah about the connections and like oh my yeah. god that's my person you know if if you don't want to connect someone because you don't feel you're that close to that person that's mm -hmm. a different story that's different because that means I like understand that. that's out of my way they might not like yeah. it but if you can why wouldn't you connect people why wouldn't you yeah and obviously like people will need to mutually they can mutually both need to want to yeah. connect it's not like you force someone that doesn't want to and i connect when there's a sense of purpose to be made an impact if it's just an ego like oh can i connect this person i want to meet them or i want to meet mm. this influencer i tend to say like hey like i can but what's the reason <laughs> what what's the purpose for both of you yeah are you going to create you know a different like a mm. like more better like kind of a future for both of you or are you just going to one of you going to take from the other then i'm a bit more like of course reminding them like try to focus on what you can do not mm. what you want and what you can take so i always remind people attract don't seek. It's very important. I love that. Okay. Any parting message as a seasoned Ooh, founder to yeah. any founders who are at the earlier stages in their life? Look, times are tough right now and taxes are increasing, salaries are dwindling and it's tough. I think the world will be more beautiful if we all have either side gigs or full-time gigs that create impact. I encourage all business leaders out there to encourage your employees to be entrepreneurs and have side gigs and work on making the world more beautiful. I encourage all people that are thinking about creating their brand, do it. Have your guardrails, have security, have all of that, but do it. Don't look back because it's the best thing. And I encourage all people that are currently doing, that are giving up, like ask for help and, you know, collaborate, but hang in there. But ultimately do all of this with impact at the forefront and you'll be fine. Uh, that's what I say, because I feel like the world will be a better place with more impact entrepreneurs. That is absolutely true. And what do we watch out for, Akash, next? Conservation will be a big part of my story next year. Um, I want to help more um, brands enter new markets that like, I feel like are um, not new for them, but for me are the future, like Middle East, India. So if you have a brand and you're thinking about these regions, let me know. Uh, Fable and Main has done now a pretty good job in these markets. So I'm always here to help and either invest or just support. Um, and I just want to like, yeah, make the beauty industry more beautiful, but I also want to make the conservation space more connected. So those two things are my passion for next year. That's incredible. I feel like I've learned so much about you in oh, this podcast. Cool. Thank you so much for sharing. Well, thanks for, for being an time. amazing host and for holding the space as always. And yeah, people like you are exactly what we need more in the world oh, you're so, so sweet because you, you, you champion voices but for the right you allow for the right conversation so thank you so much thank you for being here and hopefully there will be much more together thank you.